we have not normally investigated breaches of the regulations when they have been reported long after they have said to have been taken place. And I'll like, if I may, here just quickly to explain why. It was never a blanket rule, but it was uh, our guidelines that in general we wouldn't. And we've said that publicly on many occasions. Throughout the pandemic, our focus has been on what we could do to benefit public health. We police by consent and people need to see that what we're doing has a purpose. Hence the four E's approach. And of course, we did issue tickets uh, and we did enforce with some really flagrant breaches. But most people, as you all well know, responded very well to our engagement and changed their behaviour. We do have finite resources, and even more so during the worst periods of the pandemic, when our officers fell ill, as well as other people. And our view was and is that it would not normally be a proportionate, normally be a proportionate use of officers' time to spend their time bearing in mind the nature of the offences after the fact, investigating what could have been thousands of complaints. These are summary only offences. The people who commit them get a, a fixed penalty notice. I think in general, the public would understand that we need to focus on violent crime and terrorism and other priorities as well, of course, as doing our bit during the pandemic. But recognising that there might be some occasions where we would investigate retrospectively, we generated some guidelines, only guidelines, uh, but guidelines that we have stuck to. And you will be aware that we have on occasion investigated retrospectively. Some of my own officers, a few, have received penalty notices when we heard after the fact that they had breached the guidelines. One or two high profile people also, when it was plain that they had admitted and there was good evidence, uh, they also, after the fact and a few weeks after the fact, received penalty notices. And the occasions on which we have done that have been where we were, in, we were looking at something which appeared to be the most serious and flagrant type of breach. And where three factors came into play. Firstly, there had to be, of course, I'll add a fourth, there has to be some kind of evidence, not just somebody saying something. There has to be some sort of start point, some sort of evidence. But my three factors were and are, there was evidence that those involved knew or ought to have known that what they were doing was an offence. We're not investigating would significantly undermine the legitimacy of the law and where there was little ambiguity around the absence of any reasonable defence. So in those cases where those criteria were met, the guidelines suggested that we should potentially investigate further and uh, end up giving people tickets. We have a long established and effective working relationship uh, with the Cabinet Office, who have an investigative capability. And as you well know, they have been carrying out uh, an investigation over the last few weeks. And what I can tell you this morning is that as a result, firstly, of the information provided by the Cabinet Office inquiry team, and secondly, my officer's own assessment, I can confirm that the Met is now investigating a number of events that took place at Downing Street and Whitehall in the last two years in relation to potential breaches of COVID-19 regulations. My officers have assessed several other events that appear to have taken place at Downing Street and Whitehall. On the available information, these other events 
are assessed as not reaching the threshold for criminal investigation. Throughout the pandemic, the Met has sought to take, as I have said, a proportionate approach. I should stress that the fact that we are now investigating does not, of course, mean that fixed penalty notices will necessarily be issued in every instance and to every person involved. We will not be giving a running commentary on our current investigations, but I can assure you that we will give updates at significant points, as we would generally do. And finally, I would just say, you mentioned a num number of other matters that you are clearly frustrated about, and, and no doubt some other people as well. I know uh, what you are talking about in each instance. I suspect it's not worth discussing them here and not appropriate. All I would say is I beg to differ. I am fully aware of the decisions that were made in each of the cases that you mentioned, uh, Umesh, uh, and I believe we did the right thing, and we will always seek to do the right thing. Thank you, Commissioner.